Hello everyone. What I want to do in this video is just give you a really quick overview of the Python Anywhere website. So what you do is you bring up a browser and you type in to your browser pythonanywhere.com and what you're going to want to do to start up with if you have never signed in and made up an account is to you click on this green button that says start running Python in less than a minute. Then what you do when this page comes up here is you, you click on the create a beginner account. And then what you do is you type in a username, which could be anything, but I usually use my email address minus the at grcc.edu part. So for me, I would, I would type in this uh, email address. Then you would use your grcc.edu email address for this. And a password, is, it's really up to you on that, what you uh, choose. And then you have to agree to the terms and conditions. And those basically just say that you can't produce programs with it that you would sell, which we're not going to worry about. So you can check that box and then you click register. And what it will do is it will send you an email and you just have to click in the email that you get to verify that your email address is legitimate. And that is all you really need to do to set things up. So once you've done that, when you go to the website, you will then just click in on the login link up at the top right corner and enter your username and your password. And then what you'll normally see when you do that is a screen that looks something like this, where you see this um, set of options up at the top in these tabs. To get to the screen here, you just click on dashboard and that takes you to this particular page. Now there are two ways to in Python to write code. You can bring up an interactive console and just start typing in code, which isn't really a program that you run. It's just you type in a line of code, you hit enter, and it does what it's supposed to do. You know, that really isn't a program. A program is a set of instructions, and they're typically saved in a file. And that's the kind of thing we're going to be doing in our course. So to get to that point, what you do is you simply click on the, the files link. And you have two options here. One is to create a new directory. One is to create a new file. Now, these files are, are there by default, and they're system files for the most part, although the two at the bottom are, are files that I created um, just on my own uh, for fun at some point. You can always delete files simply by clicking the little delete, uh, little trash can there. You can edit a file by clicking the middle button. But in our case, let's just say we want to create a new file. Now, all this stuff that's sitting in here, a lot of these dot files, I don't really know what they are, and that's fine. But what I would suggest, if you look up here, you'll notice where you are right now, you're in your username folder. And I would suggest that you make a, a directory here called Programs, and you click New. And now you'll notice I'm in the Programs directory, and there are no files in this directory. That'll make things a little bit cleaner. And if you put all your, your uh, files in here, you'll be able to keep things a little more organized. And then let's say that you are asked to do an assignment. Let's say the assignment wants you to print out Hello world on the screen. What you do is you would go here to the right. You would type in a file name and let's say the assignment told you to enter a file called hello. It's important that you type in the .py extension on the end. If you don't do that, it won't realize it's a Python file. So make sure you type in the .py and then you click new. So at this point you can start writing your program and I'm just going to put in something really simple here. All right. And I can at this point go and click this button here to run it. Actually, it saves it and runs it. 
and then it puts the run environment down in this black box below and you can see there it's printing out the welcome message now if your program was going to ask for user input you know you would type it in down in this box and basically your program runs down in this area here now if your program has an error in it let's say that you have a syntax error so you so you forget a that closing parenthesis there and you go to run it It will tell you here that there's a syntax error on the particular line. So it says that in the file, hello.py, on line one, and this is what you have on line one, and there's a little caret there that points at the semicolon and it says invalid syntax. And so if you look at the line by the semicolon, you see, oh, there's a missing parenthesis. So I'll put that back in, hit run again, and then it reloads the environment and runs it, if it can, and it does, and it works. Now, if I go back up to the Programs folder, now you can see my file in here. So if I log out, <clears throat> and I come in and log back in again, I can go right back into my files and into my Programs folder and there's my file. I can delete it. I can go back and edit it and add more things to it. And that's how you get your way around in the environment. Now let's say that you wanted to take this file and submit it as an assignment. Well right now the file is inside of the Python Anywhere environment. What you need to do is to download the file to your desktop so that you can attach it in Blackboard and submit it. To do that, you would click this icon right here, and it will ask you for a place to store it. And I'll put mine right on my desktop. And then you can attach that file to your assignment in Blackboard and submit it. Incidentally, you can also upload files. So if you have a file on your desktop that you want to put into the system, you can also upload these files to the Python Anywhere website. Now there's one more thing I want to show you before um, I turn the video off here. One of the features of Python Anywhere that is worth taking advantage of is the fact that as a student you can give a teacher access to your file structure. And I set myself up as a teacher in Python Anywhere. So what you can do is you can go in and nominate me as your teacher. And that way I'll have access to your folder structure here. So if you have a problem with an assignment or a program that doesn't run and you don't know why you're trying to fix it but you can't, you can email me and say, hey, would you go into my account and take a look at such and such a file and help me with this file? And I'll be able to do it. So to make that work, what you have to do is log in, come up to the upper right corner and click the account link. And you'll notice here these three tabs. The one on the far right says teacher. You're going to want to click that. And what you'll do here where it says enter your teacher's username is you will enter the following text. Professor Coates, GRCC, and you'll click the check mark. That sets me up as your teacher. Now, if you go back and click on the, the uh, dashboard, it will now say up at the upper right corner, your teacher is Professor Coates, GRCC. So if you do that, I'll be able to access your files. So I highly recommend you do this so that I can and get to your file structure. It's much easier to help you out with problems if you do this for me. So, so go ahead and, and set up an account, link me up as, as a teacher, and then as you click in files, you'll be able to go in here and build your programs. And that's really all there is to it. 
knowing what you know now, you'll be able to create Python applications. And now it's just a matter of learning the Python language itself. And we'll be doing that throughout the semester. If you have any questions, uh, send me an email at tcoats at grcc.edu. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in class.